Hi, welcome to this video series on SMT solvers. Today I'm going to talk about one interesting application of SMT solvers to the field of program synthesis. The idea of program synthesis is pretty novel. Um, you have, you have a, a program in mind that you would like the computer to infer from a set of constraints you will provide. For example, um, you specify a, a very basic constraint that I would like to have a program, F, okay? F takes two inputs, X and Y. Let's take X and Y as Boolean variables, right? And the program should compute something, but the output should be equal to, um, say, uh, and of X comma Y, okay? What, what I mean by and is Boolean and, right? X and Y. So basically, this is what I want the function F to be. However, I don't want F to have my and inside. I want my F to have only um, or and not, or not, okay? So we want only these two uh, Boolean uh, operators to be part of my F. So we want the computer to infer that just given this particular constraint. This is the constraint we are giving and we want a computer to, to come up with the function f. It turned out that some classes of programs can be inferred, okay? Maybe you, you're writing a shell code to, to, uh, to overcome a, 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 an intrusion detection system, or you are trying to come up with an optimized version of one program um, without using certain syntax elements, okay? So there are many interesting applications of such a, a, a program, okay? Maybe you're doing code obfuscation, right? You wanted to make the code complicated, so you're re removing, uh, um, basic operations by a lot of other combination of operations and so on. So there are many, many, many applications of program synthesis. I thought I will just talk about some, some simple examples to start with today. So I'm going to show you how um, we can synthesize such a function f, okay, given this constraint, okay. So I'm going to show you C, CVC4, which is a SMT solver uh, together with the uh, program synthesis capability, um, which is available online. So I will um, show you my uh, specification and how I inferred a program automatically. Okay, so um, let me share that with you. What you're seeing here is uh, basically my grammar specification, right? I, I wanted to uh, infer a function f. Uh, f of x, y is equal to uh, x comma y, um, the, the, the Boolean and of x comma y. So I want the computer to come up with the f. We don't know exactly what the f will look like at this point. But I put a constraint, right? My f should be made of or not uh, true or false. These are the only things allowed, okay? Um, so I would like to uh, use a symbolic uh, execution technology or constraint solving technology under the hood uh, to generate a function f for me. So let's run this. What you're seeing is an online version of CVC4 SMT solver. Um, it has synthesis of code capabilities as well. So here you go. It synthesized a function for us, right? The function, let me explain what this function is. This function is nothing but, um, what is this function? This function is nothing but f of x comma y is equal to, they infer not of x, not of y, and then an r, right? This is basically the r, this is how we write r in uh, computer science logic, uh, r. So we have, uh, and then another not in the front. So. So this is basically De Morgan's law, if you remember De Morgan's law. So we, we can see that the only thing that is inside here is or, right, or not. And this is exactly what the grammar said, don't use and, okay? So he didn't use and, it was able to compute f of x, y using uh, these two constructions, okay? Uh, these two primitives, okay? So uh, this is the basic idea of program synthesis. You specify a constraint, and you specify, I am using grammar-based synthesis, right? I specify the grammar of the program that I would like to have, and I let the computer to come up with a, a candidate function f that I would like to use, uh, maybe for obfuscation or for uh, optimization, whatnot, okay. That, that's basically the, the core of the demo I would like to present. And um, we can also play with uh, uh, this particular example a little bit. Say, let's assume you're interested in uh, um, an XR, right? You would like to use an XR, but um, you're not allowed to use, uh, say, XR directly in your function. So shall we let the computer to infer an XR based on R and not? Let's see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> it came up with this Boolean expression. This expression is made of R and not only, right? And if, if you can um, uh, read this in the same way I codified earlier, it's, it's nothing but XR of uh, X and Y, okay? So basically, um, 
we specify the grammar and we let the computer infer programs for us. We can do more interesting things with, with this kind of setup, not just Boolean expressions, but we can also infer um, mathematical functions. Like say, say you are you're doing some very basic uh, math functions. Say you're multiplying a number X by another constant and you're not allowed to use multiplication for whatever reasons, okay? Maybe optimization reasons or performance reasons. So how do you to say uh, to the computer, only use uh, shift operators or bitwise and, and uh, bitwise or uh, come up with a program for us, okay? So let's, let's do something similar, okay? So the goal now is to write a program that will multiply uh, a number X by 12, okay? And uh, we will not be able to use multiplication directly, okay? So let's do that. So what I'm going to show you is uh, this, right? This is what you're going to see. So I'm going to, what is this uh, B01100? Uh, In binary, this is nothing but number 12. So we are asking the program to do a multiplication of a number X by 12, but we are, we are putting constraints, okay? We are saying you're only allowed to use add, subtract, shift left, okay? Um, by the way, the program will not scale if I put a large bit vector. That's why I put a bit vector of size five. That means my binary system is only limited to um, bit vectors of length five. Okay, so I cannot put anything more than five. That's basically what I meant to say. Okay, so there are scalability issues in program synthesis, of course, but it's already interesting that as some very fine grained expressions can be derived from a grammar. Okay, so let me run this. Okay, here you go. So it infer a function that will do the multiplication by 12 using only bitwise shift. In, in SMT solver lang language, BV means bit vector. You're doing uh, bit vector addition, bit vector subtraction and shifting. Um, it's, it's basically like your uh, regular bitwise uh, operations you would do in, uh, in assembly or in C programs usually. Okay, so, so we are do, doing bitwise shift. Let me explain this, what's happening here, right? Um, this is what we are saying as multiply by 12, right? So why is this multiply by 12? Okay, so what we are doing is first we are doing, we are taking the number X and doing a bit by shift by one, right? When you do bit by shift by one, you're multiplying your number by two. That means the inner, inner BV is SH1 or SHL rather, computes two X, okay? Because it's multiplying X by one means multiplying X by, um, it's like this. This is what the inner expression is first, which is nothing but 2x, by the way. So I'll rewrite this by 2x. And then we are adding an x to it, which means it becomes 3x, right? So I'll remove this and replace it by 3x. And then again, we are doing this shift left uh, by 2, which means we are multiplying it by 4, okay? Which means we are multiplying it by 4. That means 12x. Essentially, that's what the specification said, right? It said um, the program better uh, be um, returning a multiple of my input x by 12. That's, that's exactly what the specification said here, right? This is what the specification said. The, the fast multiplication uh, should be equal to multi regular multiplication of x by 12, but only using add, subtract, and uh, shift left operations. Okay, that's basically uh, the purpose of program synthesis. Yeah, you can do more fancy things like uh, inferring um, algorithms and things like that. The, keep in mind though that there are scalability limitations, okay? As long as you can codify the constraint and your bit vectors are small, I have found out that you can infer interesting small programs, okay? Somewhat complex programs, but pretty interesting programs. And of course, uh, you have to spend time on, on coming up with this grammar, right? The grammar uh, that you're seeing has to be uh, uh, manually put together, otherwise uh, you, you will not be able to do uh, um, interesting uh, synthesis. Okay, that's basically what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much.